So I'm Linda Stanbridge. I my pronouns are she and her, and I live in Lexington, Michigan, at the Blue Water Campground. Um, I'm a member of Blue Water Congregation, which meets at the campground, and it's a unique congregation that meets four times a year for retreat-style congregational gatherings at the campground. Um, we had been exploring what it looks like to do mission in a new congregational model, and being that we meet at the campground, the, the grounds are sacred to us, but also just sacredness of creation is something the congregation has focused a lot on. Um, I've been familiar with the Monarch Watch program. Um, previously, I worked at the Kansas City Zoo for a few years, and um, I became aware of the program. So we, when we first arrived here, one of the things that was um, important to my husband when he became the caretaker was to start mowing a little bit less. And we, in order to make other people comfortable, because change is hard, we, uh, he would slowly mow a little bit less and a little bit less. So we're, um, and as we did this, we noticed we were having um, a ton of wildflowers that were just voluntarily coming up and were um, stunningly beautiful. And um, I think it was our second year here, we noticed that we had a lot of monarchs. And it triggered this memory for me of the way station we had at the zoo. And I approached the congregation, the pastor, and talked about doing this as a congregation project during one of our retreat weekends. Um, and it was a great project because there were um, things for people of all skill levels, planting flowers, planting seeds, um, digging holes, uh, doing a lot of different, uh, different projects. But it was something that the kids, uh, the adults, the older adults could all participate in. And um, it's a really neat and pretty simple program. Um, they have set out certain uh, qualities that they're looking for in a way station. Um, of course, you have to have milkweed for nectar, um, but you also need some um, other plants and they guide you through the process. You can register your way station, which is what we've done. So if you go to monarchwatch.org, you can actually look and see where our uh, way station is located. And um, like I said, they provide you with a lot of the information as far as what you need for plant management, but that is probably the biggest commitment. Um, we did go ahead and purchase the signs and put them up. Um, and we've gotten a lot of questions about it from other people, which I think it's always great to um, share what we're doing. But that's the very simple first step. Um, every year we kind of have to think about um, what plants looks like are coming up. Um, milkweed is kind of an ongoing thing that we have to always plant. It doesn't seem to take that well in our spot. We have to be um, really particular about how we plant it. Um, and then we have to do some trimming every year. I will say that um, with the minimizing of the mowing and the flowers, the wildflowers that are coming up on their own, it's been a pretty amazing transformation. Um, it's really across what's a county drainage ditch. So it tends to be kind of a moist area anyway, um, but it's been beautiful over the past few years to see as the seasons change, all the different flowers that come up. And we have noticed over the last few years, a few more monarchs. Um, it's not a it's not a monarch haven yet, um, but we do notice quite a bit of monarchs that come through, especially when they're migrating. Um, it's been a really cool program that is um, something that needs frequent management, but not constant, which is great for our congregation that just meets a few times a year. Um, being that we live here, we've been able to do a lot of management with that as well. Um, but it was an, it's been an awesome program. Like I said, it was great for a lot of different age groups, which was incredible. Um, and it's something that all the groups that come to the campground enjoy. It's something that uh, we have band camps that come and rent, we have congregations, different churches, and it's something that everyone is able to really um, enjoy and experience throughout the year. I would say if I was going to give advice um, before starting, uh, or taking on this project with the way station, it would be to make sure that you have a management plan and that you understand the commitment that you're making. Um, because if you don't do it the right way, if you don't provide the right types of plants and the right variety of plants, 
it's beneficial, um, but you're not going to be providing exactly the habitat that monarchs need. So I have a plan for ongoing management, how you'll pay for those things, um, where you can get your seeds from, and paying attention to what are native plants. Um, it is, again, not a ton of work, but it is something you need to have a plan for management for. Um, I think if it's a, an area where we live here, so we can be monitoring it regularly, that makes it a little bit easier too. Uh, one of the things that became important for us when we came to the campground uh, was to begin mowing less. Uh, and there are a lot of reasons for that. Um, one, it was using really a ton of staff time. And when we're thinking about managing our campground and just how much property there is, it didn't make sense to be doing as much mowing as we were. Um, with less mowing, we noticed uh, within the first season, once the brush started to fill in, um, we get a lot of migrating birds in the spring, uh, especially in May is the big month in Michigan for migrating birds. Um, and we noticed that that brush fills up uh, differently now in the spring. We're noticing um, a lot of smaller birds. Uh, this year we had a pileated woodpecker, which I don't think that had to do with less mowing, but we're, we're incredibly excited. Uh, we're hoping he stays. Um, but also, you know, providing those little brushy areas for some of the um, smaller animals on the ground that have so much benefit uh, for our ecosystem and using less fuel. Um, the amount of money that we spend, plus just the sheer uh, you know, climate impact of, of mowing that many hours um, makes an amazing difference. Um, and I think it's something that for us was an easy thing to give up. Um, we started doing it a little bit at a time because it can be hard when we make changes to our sacred spaces. Um, but the benefit, the increase in the wildflowers, and then if, we do get more monarchs, but of course we get lots of other pollinators as well. Um, the change has been pretty cool to watch unfold over the last um, five years. One of the projects that we're working on this fall is actually marking out some of our natural trails um, and identifying some native plant species that we have found throughout the campground. I have a little bit of experience um, as a naturalist, and um, it's been fun for me getting to know the campground more intimately and realizing um, what a wealth of experience is available here. Um, and I think so many people don't realize it's right in our own backyard. Um, my husband and I have really enjoyed getting to know the native plants here. Um, and we thought it would be an interesting idea to order little markers to place around the campground and have sort of a scavenger hunt or a checklist that guests can use uh, when they come through and a map of where they might find those plants um, and have an opportunity to experience something a little bit different. We also have scheduled uh, in the spring a migratory bird walk, which we will be inviting the community to join us and have the experience of walking the grounds and just listening quietly to um, the way God is working, uh, the way that's expressed through the birds uh, and all those amazing sounds and um, experiences that we have here. We are also hoping in the spring to have um, an owl walk. We have been um, blessed with a couple pairs of breeding owls, so we get to hear the babies scream all spring, um, but we're hoping to host uh, a night event to share these things uh, with the public and be a little bit more invitational with um, the sacred space that we get to steward. One of the other things I'm working on is um, some nature trails that will be sort of like a guided uh, prayer path. I'm hoping, I have to work on it still, but I'm hoping what it will be like is, you know, as you're, as you're walking along this trail, there are um, signs and symbols along the way that kind of guide you through um, sort of a, a natural, it's like a Visio Divina, but you're living it, uh, walking through the woods. So that's, that's one of the things I hope to accomplish this year. <laughs>